listen to the wind, to the wind of my soul. Where I'll end up, well, I think only God really knows. The force that propels his soul has taken him on an extraordinary journey. More than once, he ascended the heights of stardom. More than once, he faced death. And more than once, he was saved. I swam upon the devil's lake. I just decided to take a jump. And I said, until I know better, until I know how music can fit into this whole thing or how I can express myself in a new way, um, perhaps I'd better take a, take a break. With his host inside preparing for lunch, Cat decided to go swimming. But just as he swam beyond the surf, he was caught in a current and pulled out to sea. Suddenly I realized that I was fighting the ocean and the tide was going that way and I wasn't getting any closer. The fear of death struck me and I suddenly held myself and I said, Oh God, if you save me, I'll work for you. And at that moment, a wave pushed me forward and suddenly I was swimming back with all the energy that I needed and I was back on land I was just grateful to still be here because I was a lover of life you know and I still hadn't worked it out and now I was given a chance second chance miles from nowhere yes I'll take my time oh He just traveled to uh, Jerusalem, and I suppose it was a, a mini sort of spiritual journey for him. But it's amazing that he discovered another religion. I kind of almost tripped into it by going to the Dome on the Rock, which is the mosque there. I gave him a brother the Quran because I felt there was something very special in the religion of Islam. He sat there and he read this thing, and he doesn't do anything lightheartedly. And what he discovered in the Quran is a faith that he says is more familiar than foreign. Kat was learning that, like Christians and Jews, Muslims worship the one God of Abraham. When I first started reading the Quran, it, it wasn't a sudden, you know, bursting light. It wasn't like that. But it was, in a way, an immediate revelation that the first name that I read in the Quran was God's name. Yeah, I never knew that Muslims believed in God. One of the things that really surprised me, which made me feel very at home, was finding the names of all the prophets that I've read in, in the Bible. For the next year, Cat Stevens privately studied the Quran. Unlike his earlier explorations, this spiritual journey was one he seemed intent on completing. Come on now, freedom calling. Come on over and find yourself. To me, it was just a new awakening. And things which I've been writing about, you know, um, come on now, it's freedom calling, come on over and find yourself. You know, I was now saying, saying to myself, well, perhaps I'm being confronted with something that I didn't expect to find in my lifetime. You know, possibly the truth. I gave up, plugged my, plugged out my guitar and just walked off stage. Okay. Shortly after finishing Father and Son, he basically stomped off. And that cost me a lot of money as well, but, um, but it satisfied my ego. Inspired by the Quran, Cat Stevens was gradually moving toward the Islamic faith. In early 1977, his spiritual journey continued when he traveled to Jerusalem. There I was, in the middle of, you know, this holy city walking into this mosque and I think some Muslims came up to me because you know they had some problem before people walking in and trying to cause damage to the mosque they came up to me and and they said um, who are you I think that was the first time that I said I'm a Muslim translated from Arabic a Muslim is one who surrenders to God Stevens was about to do just that, fulfilling the promise he'd made after surviving a brush with death in the waters off Malibu. 
the 29-year-old immersed himself in the study of the Quran. And then Stevens came across a beautiful story that in many ways mirrored his own life. I think that revelation came when I read the Quran and it was the chapter of Joseph, the story of Joseph, the son of Jacob. It was his story that really opened my heart and I started to weep. And I said, this is not the word of a man. This is God's word. Allahu Akbar, Allah. When I accepted the Quran was indeed a book from God, it was natural for me to accept the Prophet who received this book as being the last Prophet. Allahu Akbar. I was now able to make life my art. I now have been singing about, you know, doing so many great things and, and changing the world. Well, the Quran said, you know, to me, if you don't change what's within you, you can't change anything. And so that's where you have to start. There was no more left in me. Being on stage, being highlighted, and being, if you like, uh, the center of attention was in itself slightly idolizing. And um, that, of course, was opposed to what Islam was, was teaching. Gluttony, conceit, competition, envy, sex, drugs, rock and roll. So therefore, it, it was obvious that I had to readjust myself to my new life. Billy Joel once said that if the devil was going to go into business, he would go into the music business. The music business is about egos. It's about inflating egos. Islam is very much opposite that kind of ethic. It's about diminishing the power of the ego. Yusuf Islam was now building a new life and leaving his past behind. He seemed to fall in love with the religion, and when it came to marriage, he was very wise in as much as um, he went along the route of the arranged marriage. And I think he had a couple of choices. And I remember bringing them home to see mum, you know, and have like dinner. Uh, and then after that, I asked my mother, you know, well, which girl do you think I should marry, you know? Uh, and she said, and she, she told me which one. And she was right. Yusuf was married on September 7, 1979, and was looking forward to becoming a father. Yusuf loved children. Over the years, he had made several trips to Africa and Bangladesh as the goodwill ambassador for UNICEF. Yusuf Islam donated much of his fortune to humanitarian causes. He gave up alcohol, and erasing any hope of a return to the stage, he auctioned off all his musical instruments, giving the proceeds to charity. I was giving up a kind of a, a cultural crutch, right? And I didn't need that anymore to walk. I was not able to walk in the light. All I try to do is to give a helping hand, either give charity or educate, you know, or, or stand up for human and spiritual rights. How great the beauty of the earth and the creatures who dwell on her. My religion teaches me to worship God and, and to care for the poor and the oppressed. And I think nobody's going to change my religion. So that's my work and that's my life. Here too are signs. God is the light. God is the light. From Mozambique to Malaysia, from the Sudan to Turkey, Yusuf Islam travels extensively as a humanitarian ambassador and philanthropist. These trains sound in loud on the train. Everywhere I go, there are people ready to shake my hand, wanting to, to meet me and talk to me and just listen to my experience. Hoş geldiniz. Assalamu alaikum. Hoş geldiniz. Assalamu alaikum. So oftentimes, I'm, I'm asked to just give talks and lectures in universities. I started reflecting my thoughts and those questions which were knocking at my conscience. I started writing those kind of lyrics in my songs. It's a wonderful experience. It's a wonderful road. I know we've come a long way. We're changing day to day.